Welcome to Crime Obsession, your place to get your fix of true crime. I'm very excited about this episode. This week, we're going to talk about stories of survivors. True crime journalist Karen Daniel is joining us in studio. We're going to talk to Anita Woldridge about how she survived her horrific abduction. Plus, we're getting physical when renowned self-defense expert Nelson Neo joins me for a hands-on demonstration of moves that could save your life. As always, please join the Crime Obsession Facebook group. Let us know your thoughts on stories we've covered and what cases you're following. Use the hashtag MyCrimeObsession. Now let's take a look at some stories on my mind this week. That's right, it's crime time. Here to discuss these stories is true crime journalist Karen Daniel. Hi, Karen. Hi. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having I me. I very much appreciate it. Ah. All right, big true crime news. Stephen Avery from Making a Murderer will have his case re-examined by the Wisconsin court. Now, all of this started when his lawyer, Kathleen Zelder, filed the motion to have Teresa Halbeck's bones tested for DNA, but she found the bones had been returned to Teresa Halbeck's family. And if that's not negligent enough, allegedly, the state never tested the bones for DNA. What yeah. the heck? Why were the cops so zealous to arrest Stephen? You know, honestly, I don't know. And I think that we're presented like one side of the story. I just don't think that sometimes they have all the resources. The real victim here is Teresa Hallback. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's the thing. Like, I am a personal advocate for speaking for the victim and how they can get justice. Now, I'm not sure how they get that, but it sounds like Kathleen Zellner might figure out a way to do that. And it may not involve Stephen Avery. He may I'm not be so the killer. I'm so into her. Yeah, she's, she's brilliant. She's great. Now, this next story really freaks me out. In 2014, Sherry Marchionda was traveling for work when she was attacked inside her hotel despite the deadbolt being on. Marchionda said that the man was able to enter her room, raped her for hours. The attacker is a regular at the hotel, got a key from the front desk, and they never checked his ID. What's worse is that the attacker was able to persuade the maintenance guy to break the deadbolt in her room. He said that his girlfriend and him got in a fight and then that he needs the deadbolt broken. That wasn't his girlfriend. Uh, yeah, I mean, and who's, like, you go make a request like that, like, why does somebody not question that? Absolutely. You travel so much for work. How do you keep yourself safe in hotel rooms? It's gonna sound crazy, but in my makeup bag, I carry a rubber doorstop. Sure. It's just like a thing when I'm in a hotel. Our next guest is an incredible example of a survivor and fighter. Nearly 21 years ago, a man she casually knew from her work abducted her in plain sight. He held her in a metal filing cabinet and repeatedly raped her before police rescued her eight days later. Her mental toughness helped her survive, so now she can tell her story herself. I'm truly honored to welcome Anita Woldridge. All right, Anita, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Oh, thank you so much for being here. Now, it's been almost 20 years since your abduction. How, how are you doing? Because, like, some days it feels like yesterday, and other days it's like... Oh, 20 years has passed and, or, you know, like, I can't believe that happened. Are you comfortable talking about, about your story? I mean, it's never easy, but I was always taught everything happens for a reason. I feel like I survived this for a reason. There's a reason I'm here. And if I can get my story out and help other victims to show that there is life beyond what happens to you, that's what I want to do. I actually covered your case and talked to a lot of the officers that were involved and that sort of thing. And the thing that is unique about her case is that she had the wherewithal to kind of go along with what was happening. Which is fascinating. It's amazing because that gave the officers time to figure out what happened and get to her. Trying to, trying to buy time. Yeah. She wanted to play games and wanted to have conversations like, like you and I are having, like just normal conversations instead of just like he took someone and tied them up and they're there unwillingly. So, you know, I would play the games and a lot of people would be like, how do you play games with someone that came at you and raped you? And I'm like, okay, way the balance is there. Play games, be raped. I'll, I'll play games and act happy about it all day long. And for, he thought he was playing all the mind games, like I was playing them too. I'd like for you to kind of tell the audience about how you had been taught not to yell for help because once the officers came in, they didn't think you were there. Right. He had told me if I screamed for help, if um, 
I made any noise, anything like that, it would kill me. And that was engraved in my head. So when the police entered the house, I mean, it was very forceful, very like, you know, police search warrant, like stuff you would hear on TV. And I wanted to believe it was true, but I'm like thinking he could be playing a video, see if I would scream for help. And I said nothing. And I just remember like the box opening and there being like five officers, like, you know, like SWAT gear standing over me. And I'm like, I just, I was like, thank God, take me home. And then I got in the ambulance and I was close to me. And I mean, of course I'm crying and everything. And I'm like, I was like, I want to talk to my mom and dad. I'm got to go home. I'm going to be in a wedding in two days. And I think I have a credit card bill overdue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just like, I mean, I had eight days to think about a lot of things. Okay? Yeah. So, yeah. You know, this guy's going to ruin my credit. Like, <laughs> so you're a big advocate now. You speak publicly about this. You're a volunteer firefighter. What drove you to a life of service? I've always wanted to help other people. Um, I just had a passion for that. And that made me happy, going and helping people and serving them. And, you know, probably started, like, through church. Just realized that I, I want to give more back and more back to my community. Um, Anita, I wanted to ask you, you're familiar with the Elizabeth Smart case, and Wanda Barzi has just recently been released. Do you have any thoughts on that? My heart goes out to her, because I honestly do not know how I would feel. I, I just, I, I don't even know. Like, I would be devastated and heartbroken, and everybody says I'm so strong, and I can do all these things, and I think if he was out, I would want to hole up and hide. What would you say to women right now that are watching that might find themselves in a situation like you were in? As much as you can, try to stay calm. It doesn't always have to mean the end. I think, you know, when I was kidnapped, like, I always had this thought, like, I'd rather be killed than be raped. And, you know, people come to me and they say, I couldn't do what you did, and I hope you never have to find out. But I had all those same thoughts, too. All of you women are much stronger than you think you are. Well, Anita, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for sharing your story. And thank you for dedicating your life to service. It, it really means a lot. Thank you. Anita's story is incredible. It's unreal. Yeah. I love, I love the idea of taking the worst possible situation ever, turning it on its head and doing good. Yeah. I'm completely inspired by those stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Karen Daniel, thank you so much for being here and helping me interview Anita. Thanks for having me. All right, now I want to take it a step further and get some useful tips that we can all use. Everybody, please welcome Nelson Neo, founder of Shield Self Defense for Women. Nelson. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Thank you so much for being here. It's I'm a, a little concerned, but I'm very excited to learn some tips that could actually help me protect myself in a situation that I might not be expecting. Okay. So, Nelson, what are the three things we're going to do today? Uh, we're going to do grab from behind. Okay. That's the most common assault for women. Um, <clears throat> then we're going to do the hair grabs. Okay? okay. And then if we have time, we'll do the choke. Okay. So the first thing you're going to teach me is grab from behind. Yes. Okay. So what are the basics of this before we get into it? Okay. From here. Okay. Okay. Drop. Move your hips. Smash. Boom. Boom. Step back. Pivot. Smash. Finish him. <laughs> okay, okay, let's try it. Yeah. Let's try it slow. Okay, yeah, slow. That's a good idea. I'm here. So if and I soft. <laughs> okay, so okay. if I grab, yep. boom, grab me tight. Bring yeah, it in. Wide in my feet. The move him in. Smash. <laughs> Smash. Nice. Finish him. <laughs> nice. That's going to break. Step okay. back between my feet. Boom, turn. When you, when you lock, interlock your, here, okay. and lock your elbows together. Okay. Pull my head okay. here. Now start smashing. <laughs> Nice. Oh, sorry. I feel like I got okay. carried away. <laughs> go. Oh, I feel powerful. Awesome. Yeah, I good. feel good. Okay, right, right. what's next? So if, when someone grabs your hair like this, yeah. the first thing you do is always grab the hand. So if I grab you from behind, you grab my hand first. So from here, okay, so so if I grab, walking. grab my hand, okay. pull it in. So when I pull, I'm pulling your whole body. Okay. okay? There's no room for movement here. Okay. This area is secure. Keep your elbows together in front of you. So if I slam you somewhere, boom, <laughs> boom, your face is protected. Oh, that's smart. Okay? Okay. Now from here, go back until you bump into me. Boom. What do you do when you have someone behind you? 
Finish it. Yeah. So what? So can we walk through the choke one mm -hmm. because this is literally one of my biggest fears. Yeah, yeah. When someone's on your neck like this, yeah. oh. you want to use your whole body rotation to break the choke. Okay. So first you squeeze your shoulder to your ear to trap one of the hand that's choking, and then forcefully turn to the other side with your shoulder out. Okay. So when you turn, your shoulder should pass my center. So if you only, th yeah, if you only turn here, it doesn't work. Th pass my center. Okay, yeah. let's try it. Okay. Just so everybody at home knows, he's holding very <laughs> light. He's not actually attacking me, even though my face expresses differently. Okay. I'm fine. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. So arm up here. Yeah. That, Look, that works. You can't be on your neck when you turn like that. Now from there, Catch me with your other hand, trap me to your body. Boom, smash me with your elbow. Boom, and then grab my arm, push your elbow to my chest, and start smashing the groin. Finish him. Nelson, thank you so much for teaching us all of these it's fantastic tips. And just so you guys know, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Wherever you are, get out there and take a self-defense class. Knowledge and strength is power. Nelson, thank you so much for coming by and teaching us all of this stuff. I genuinely appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time, bye.